The members of a new commission set up by the United States Department of Agriculture to tackle decades of prejudice by the department, which black farmers claim has contributed to a steep decline in their numbers across the country, will be announced on Thursday. Stick around to find out everything you need to know about this new announcement, along with how farmers of color are skeptical of this new endeavor. First, new USDA commission, how to end discrimination in farming. Beginning this month, the United States Department of Agriculture will provide historic debt relief to farmers of color. The USDA will receive an estimated $4 billion in the newest federal COVID aid package to help these farmers pay down their loans. It's a first-of-its-kind congressional obligation to compensate farmers of color for the harm caused by decades of lending prejudice. The department has been termed the final plantation because of the widespread mistrust. It's like the fox guarding the hen house, says John Boyd, a Virginia livestock and row crop farmer who has long lobbied for the USDA to do more to assist black farmers. When Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack met with a group of farmers, he was met with this kind of skepticism. The new initiative is a very, very important first step, according to Vilsack, who also acknowledges that the Department of Agriculture has a lot of work to do. The USDA and its lending arm, the Farm Service Agency, have taken an unprecedented step in providing debt relief to socially disadvantaged farmers, including black, Native American, and other farmers of color. However, this group, particularly black farmers, has a tumultuous relationship with the agency. They have already been promised compensation for discrimination twice, and they've even won the largest civil rights class action settlement in U.S. history. Despite this, the problem of disproportionately limited access to government assistance, which many in the agriculture industry rely on, persists. Next, the disadvantaged black farmers face. Farmers of color have had considerably less access to government assistance than white farmers, according to report after report. According to the Census Bureau, black farmers now make up 1.4% of all U.S. farmers, a significant decrease from 1920, when they made up around 14% of all U.S. farmers. The size of black farmers shrank as the population of black farmers shrank too. According to the Census Bureau, black farmers lost 80% of their land between 1910 and 2007. Black farmers currently work about 0.5% of the country's farms. Additionally, since the first hearing in 1999, a number of congressional hearings have been held on the subject. Meanwhile, the percentage of black farmers in the United States has decreased from 14% in 1920 to just under 2% in 2017. Native Americans make up less than 3% of farmers, Hispanic make up 4%, and Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders make up 1%. According to online data, farmers of color in the South have lost 90% of their land over the last century, resulting in a loss of $250 billion to $350 billion in accumulated wealth and income. The drop can be attributed to a variety of factors. If you ask farmers, the USDA's lack of assistance is at the top of their list. During his recent visit to Georgia, Agriculture Secretary Vilsack admitted this. People have been at a serious disadvantage when they don't have access to the Department of Agriculture's comprehensive range of services and benefits, he said. Of course, white farmers had the upper hand. They had access to all the tools. As a result, they have had ample opportunity to develop and expand. They were able to buy the latest and best equipment. Their yields were great, and they only got larger and larger. As you can see, black farmers have had a huge disadvantage that has stemmed over decades, even centuries in the farming industry. Pigford v. Glickman, the largest civil rights class action settlement in U.S. history, was won by black farmers in 1999. The legal Legal victory acknowledged the department's discrimination and inability to respond to the complaints. However, among black farmers, that case is now well known. Black farmers have a very, very, very poor impression of it, Wright added, because the conclusion was not in their best interest. Pigford was ultimately responsible for the approval of approximately 16,000 applications for monetary rewards. However, little under 7,000 applications were flatly denied, and nearly 60,000 were turned down because they were submitted late. In addition to receiving monetary rewards, many farmers hoped for and expected debt relief. Only 425 of them, however, got their obligations cancelled. Farmers felt misled, and their loans and interest rates continued to rise. You can see why farmers of color are skeptical and feel as though they have always been at a major disadvantage. Next, an individual case. This issue affects thousands of black farmers all over the United States. Deidre Steens, a Texas cattle rancher, left her teaching profession three years ago to help rescue her family's farm. She was ready for the physically demanding chore of herding animals. Steens, 41, starts her day with her 68-year-old father, Elvin Steens, at 7 a.m. Hundreds of black farmers have been denied loans from the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the last two years, including Steens. According to a CNN study of the government's most recent data, more farmers of color, particularly black and Asian farmers, have been denied loans, while the agency has authorized more loans for white farmers. The loan inequities linger, as white farmers sue over what they claim as discriminatory language in a COVID relief package, which was signed into law by the president 
President Joe Biden earlier in 2021. This law included $4 billion to help socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers pay off farm loans, which includes black and other minority farmers. Rejections have had a significant influence on black farmers like Steen's. She was refused an FSA direct operating loan for her company, Black Gold Resourcing LLC, which attempts to help farmers access FSA programs earlier this year. A direct loan is crucial for a farmer, according to P. Wade Ross, the chief executive of Texas Small Farmers and Ranchers community-based organization, claiming that it is crucial for a farmer and in many cases, the only resort. Only time will tell if things finally change for the better and put both white and black farmers at an equal level. Technologies that are innovating and expanding the farming industry. Technology within the farming industry has expanded drastically within the last decade and only continues to expand and evolve. There is said to be a significant change within the industry this year, so we thought it was only fitting to share some of the latest and greatest technology that has made its way into the farming world. Artificial Intelligence First up, Artificial Intelligence. Artificial Intelligence, according to numerous internet sources, is one of the primary catalysts that is continuing to alter agriculture. By assisting farmers in forecasting meteorological conditions, AI will significantly improve land-based farming sustainability. Farming is classed as a high-risk endeavor. One main thing that contributes to this is the weather, which has always been a problem for farmers, whether it's flooding or a drought or anything in between. Food security stabilization is a global priority. Yara, for example, collaborates with IBM to boost crop yields by using hyper-local weather forecasts. Farm Weather, their software, was created for smallholder farmers to assist them in maximizing crop output despite inclement weather. Now this is only one example of how farmers are implementing AI systems to improve their yield. Vertical Farms Vertical farming is changing the farming world and involves the process of cultivating crops in layers that are piled vertically. It frequently integrates soilless farming techniques such as hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics, as well as controlled environment agriculture, which tries to optimize plant development. Buildings, shipping containers, tunnels, and abandoned mine shafts are some of the most frequent structures used to house vertical farming systems. Dixon Despommier, a Columbia University professor of public and environmental health, created the contemporary concept of vertical farming in 1999. Current vertical farming techniques, when combined with other cutting-edge technologies like customized LED lights, have yielded almost 10 times the crop of traditional farming methods. The main benefit of vertical farming is the higher crop production that comes with a decreased unit area of land requirement. Another sought-after benefit is the enhanced potential to farm a broader range of crops at the same time, because crops do not share the same plots of land while growing. Crops are also resistant to weather disturbances because they are grown indoors. Autonomous Machines and Robotics Apart from a big push towards sustainability, we expect to see the adoption of autonomous tractors and other robotic technology rise at an exponential rate, according to several farming professionals. Many people feel that shifting to this approach will have a significant impact on labor costs, efficiency, and productivity. Robotics, according to reports, can also significantly aid in the alleviation of labor shortages. Although it will be a big change to get used to, the use of robots in large warehouses is already happening, so there is no doubt it will make its way into the farming industry soon. And there you have it, everything you need to know about the new USDA commission and how they are trying to end discrimination in farming. However, farmers of color around the United States remain skeptical. Additionally, we touched on some of the most innovative technology that is quickly making making its way into the farming world. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.